Lord. I greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wow, uh, this is the day that the Lord has made and I'm, gr I'm grateful for this wonderful day to stand before the people of God, ministering unto the people of God. You know, this is one job that I don't take lightly. I know that God has a purpose for us. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, mighty and living God, I thank you this morning. Thank you, mighty God, for strengthening me with might by your spirit in my inner man to release, to give birth to the mysteries of your word, the mysteries of Christ. Father, without you, we are nothing. Without you, mighty God, I cannot speak. Holy Spirit, you said in your word, Isaiah 50 verse 4, that I shall speak with the tongue of the learned. And you promise in your word that, that the people who know your God shall be great and perform great exploits. Father, frame my ways, Holy Spirit, I pray. Frame my ways. Not my will, Father, but your will. In Jesus' name, amen. I, you are greeted once more in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Today's sermon is that for God has not given us the spirit of fear. Hallelujah. You know, before I can go into the sermon, I just have one request to all those who are watching us through the different types of medias. Please pray for your pastors. Pray for your apostles. Pray for your prophets and teachers and evangelists. Pray for your leaders. The reason why I'm saying this, I'm, I'm saying this out of a heavy spirit. Pastors are dying with this disease, COVID-19. And I want the church put aside your, your differences with your pastor. Put aside your, your judgments. Their wrongs, whatever that they might have offended you with. Please put that aside and pray for the servants of God. The Bible says when the church prayed Peter was released from a certain death. When Herod took and killed John he saw that it pleased the Jews. He proceeded and took Peter to do the same also. However, the Bible says the church prayed. An angel of deliverance was dispatched to release Peter from prison. The Bible doesn't say the disciples prayed or the apostles prayed. The Bible says the church prayed. So when the church prayed, God is able to intervene. Let us pray for our leaders. Let us pray for our spiritual parents. If this is the time for the church to put away all the differences, that time is now. When the enemy wants to attack any institution, his biggest enemy is unity. 
when the church stand united we shall be victorious this is not the time to play petty politics the church need to rise up and pray for the leaders for the pastors and pray also for each other this is the time for the church to stand up and pray for each other I'm not saying other people who are dying of COVID are not important. They are equally important. One death is, is too many. It's, 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 not, it's not on. So when the church stand up and pray, we shall receive victory. Hallelujah. That was placed in my spirit too heavy that we, we need to pray as a church. Make time every day to pray for the body of Christ. We need each other more than ever now. We need each other more than ever. I need you and you need me. Let us be the church that Jesus Christ died for. I hope and pray that you, you heard me and you heard the Spirit of the Lord. This Friday, we are having a virtual midnight prayer of Holy Communion. Among other things, we will be praying for pastors and leaders of the church and the body of Christ as a whole. Reason B, the enemy knows that when you strike the shepherd, the sheep will scatter. So, I'm declaring and decreeing that I'm putting an end. Pastors shall live. The shepherds shall live. We shall not die. The, the word shall be fulfilled. We shall preach this gospel. Hallelujah. And on that note, I just want to pass my condolences to all the families who have lost their loved ones. We are praying for you. We know that it is not easy to lose someone that you were speaking with, interacting with the next thing they are gone. We are praying with you. May God strengthen you. May you find comfort in the Holy Spirit and His Word. God loves you. Let's go to the Word. Mark 4, 35-41. Mark 4, 35 to 41. Say, on the same day when evening had come, he said to them, let us cross over to the other side. Now when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was, and other little boats were also with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat, beat into the boat, so that it was already filling. But he was standing in the sleep. He was standing asleep on a pillow. And they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Then he arose. And rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased. And there was a great calm. But he said to them, Why are you so fearful? How is that you have no faith? 
And they feared exceedingly and said to one another, Who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? May the Lord bless his word. Amen. You see, there are times in our lives where we will be in the will of God walking in the will of God walking with Jesus but still the storms will come the Bible says yes we, as we have read that verse 35 Mark 4 35 he said Jesus said to them let us cross over to the other side and the disciples listened they acted upon his word. They entered into the boat with Jesus. They were within the confines of the will of God. They acted upon the will of God. They listened to the word of God. top it up they were with Jesus they said and the storm came that storm threatened their very existence the storm came threatening their lives They were fearful. They forgot that they are with the master in the boat. The very same Jesus who made the blind man see. The very same Jesus who rose Lazarus from the dead is with them in the boat and yet the boat is being rocked by the storms and those storms the Bible said they were, they were fearful storms they were fierce storms the water was entering into the boat you know child of God in this season, in these times, it's easy to condemn yourself and tell yourself that maybe this is happening to me because I'm outside the will of God. Maybe I'm facing this storm. I've lost the loved one. I'm sick. Because I'm outside the will of God. But I want to put it to you today. That even in the will of God. There will be issues. That will arise. Issues that will threaten your peace. Issues that will threaten your work. Issues that will threaten your marriage. Issues that will threaten your businesses. I know it's not something that you want to hear. But I want to put it to you, child of God. This is the truth that you must embrace. Why? Because if you don't embrace this truth, you won't know how to deal with the storms. The first thing that you are going to do will be to accuse God or condemn yourself. That maybe I've done something wrong. Maybe this God does not exist. Maybe I'm just born again. I've been just been born again yesterday. They told me how Mudimu Ali they Hayo Matata. They lied to you. Even in the will of God, there will be those things that will question your faith. There will be those things that will question the word of God in you. 
There will be those things that will question the Jesus in you. Because the Bible says, the word was asleep in the boat. The very same things that he created through his word were threatening the lives of the one he loved. But he was there in the boat. You know, the disciples went through what I call three spiritual storms. The first storm that they did, one was to question God. Don't you care that we are perishing? Master, don't you care that we are dying? And the second storm was to question themselves. Why are we terrified with Jesus in our midst? The last storm, they questioned the divinity and the power of the word of God. Hallelujah. I want you to know something, child of God, this morning. That these are the times to wake up the word in you. These are not the times to comment about what's happening. What will happen and what will not happen tomorrow. What are the statistics? No. In the process of the, 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 the disciples, when they realize that they are about to die. Remember, we are talking about seasoned fishermen. This man has a, has a lifetime experience of boating or fishing. They know what the water can do. They are good swimmers. But this time, their experience didn't help them. They've been fishing for too long. Now they were not fishing. They are in the boat with Jesus. I want you to know that the disciples that were in the boat, they were they were fishers before he made them fishers of men. You see, these are not the times and season to depend on our experience. What might have worked yesterday will not work today. What might have worked last year will not work today. What will always work is the power of the word of God. Hallelujah. They said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? God, do you not care that your people are dying? Do you not care that people are losing their loved ones? You know, our flesh can make us question the love of God. But in Romans 8, he said, nothing will separate me from you. I have loved you with the everlasting love. But God, why are we perishing? Did we miss the mark anyway? No. We did not miss the mark, church. You see, this is the very position that the enemy wants us in. He doesn't want us to believe in the God that we serve. He wants us to question the love of God for us. Just like the disciples said, don't you care that we are perishing? Through the pain that you are going through, child of God. Through the doubt that you are going through, child of God. 
in the storms that, that might be happening in your life, child of God, I want you to know one thing. He is still Jehovah. He is still God. He still loves you and your family. Some of the things we might not have answers to explain why it has happened. Even the Bible, the Bible did not explain why the storms has happened specifically towards the bowl that Jesus was inside. There is no explanation given. As even in our lives, we might not have answers of what's happening around us. But there is only one answer that I have for you, child of God. If you can still hear me today, if you can still hear me now, he is the Lord and Savior of your life. And greater things are waiting for you. Hallelujah. Do not despair. Do not be discouraged. You see, when heaven speak to a situation, it is bound to change. Jesus Christ said to them, let us go to the other side. To Jesus Christ, it is already as good as what? Done. He said it. When the wind arose, he knew that they would, they would listen to him. He rebuked the storm. I want you to know something. Don't allow the storm to, out, to override the promises that God has for you. I'll repeat it. Do not allow the storm to override the promises of the word. In, in everything that happens to you, stick to the word. Do you hear me, child of God? You know, I love what Job says. They told him to curse his God and die. He said one thing. I know my Redeemer lives. Child of God, the same Jesus still alive for you today. You might be questioning him why so and so died. Why so and so is sick. But in the midst of your questions, do not doubt his love for you. In the midst of that pain, don't ever doubt how much God loves you. There are certain things that our minds cannot fathom or comprehend. But there is one thing that I know. He is God. He is almighty. And above it all, he is the all-knowing God. Maybe one day, we'll understand why he took our loved ones. But today, I want you to focus on his love for you. Hallelujah. Let us go to the book of Romans quickly. Romans 8. Romans 8. I know that we need to be speaking about fear. We'll go to that. Romans 8. Verse 35. He said, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution of fair mind or nakedness or peril of sword is written? For your sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him 
who loved us. 38. For I'm persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor powers nor things present nor things to come, nor height nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. In all these things, you are not separated from the love of God. Amen. Believe in the power of his word. Still, believe in the efficiency of his word. God wants us to want, I want to take us to a place of understanding him better. You see, in Mark 4 verse 41, the Bible says, after all was said and done, they had a new revelation of Jesus Christ. They said to themselves, who is this man that even the storms and the winds listen to him? In everything that is happening, child of God, do not miss the revelation of who Christ is. Because even in the midst of storms, he will still reveal himself. Even in the midst of contrary winds, he wants to still reveal himself to you and your family. All that you have to do, believe in him. Just believe. You know, He cannot only feel your pain. He can fix it. Listen to me. He cannot just only feel your pain. He can fix it. And he will fix it. We might not understand now. We might not understand how. But all that I know is his word, his word shall not go back to him void. His word shall stand in your life. His word shall accomplish that which he purposed to accomplish and prosper in the things that he sent into to your life. Do not be shaken, child of God. Hallelujah. You know, 2 Timothy 1.7, he says, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of a sound mind. I want you to know that when storms arise, have a God-based fear. <laughs> what is a God-based fear? When the disciples saw the storms, as I said to you, they were good swimmers. They were seasoned fishermen. They did not jump out of the boat and start swimming. They could have jumped right into their death. What they did, they acknowledged whom they have in the boat. Oh, Am I talking to someone? That they did not, you know, that, that, that's what they call a word-based fear. The fear that makes you run to the word. The fear that makes you run to prayer. The fear that makes you run to fasting and prayer. The fear that makes you run to Holy Communion. That is a fear-based word or a word-based fear. They could have committed suicide. They could have thought among themselves, eh, guys, eh, you know, we have Jesus, but we've never seen him fishing. Peter, I trust you. I know you are a seasoned fisherman. Eh, John, I trust you. I trust you, but Jesus, I've never seen him in the boat. He's not experienced with the boat. That's the reason why, as he stands right now, in these storms, he's sleeping. 
He's not experiencing the boat. So guys, we are on our own. What we need to do now, let us jump this. Let us jump and get off this boat. Unless we die. There are, the Bible says there were other small boats on the sides. You know, to me, those small boats represent small solutions. Somebody must tell you, might advise you that maybe go to this prophet or this inyanga. They will tell you what happened to your loved ones. Those are the small boats that were around the bigger boat. You know, we, we, we don't run to small boats. Even if our boat is being rocked, we wake up the word on the inside of us. We wake up Jesus who's with us. Even though we know that he might not have the experience of swimming. No, no. He doesn't have the experience of boat. He doesn't have the experience of waters. He is the creator of the boat that they were in. He is also the creator of the seas that they were in. He is also the creator of the wind that was rocking the boat. He is the only one who can be your solution. He's the only one who can bring forth peace and calamity. That there is no why they say, Master, I want you to go to your word and say, Father God, you promised in your word and see if the word won't take care of the storm. Maybe you are listening to me, watching me right now. Your job is threatened. You're not sure what you are going to have next month. The Bible says in the beginning was the word. And the word was God. The word was with God. And nothing that, and nothing that was made was made without him. The very same word who created you, he will provide for you. Amen. Revelation 3, 7 says, he opens the door that no man can close. And he closes the doors that no man can open. That door that you want it open. That door that you are believing God that Father, if this door of this opportunity can be opened, this storm will end. He is the way maker. In Micah 3, they call him the breaker who goes before us. He will go before you. Be like the disciples. Do not jump off your boat. Stay there. It's not time to change churches. It is not time to look for a better or greater or whatsoever anointing. It is time for you to seek the weight. It is time for you to build a personal relationship with God. It is not time to jump off the boat. I don't know why, why I can't get off the boat. Call upon the master. Hallelujah. 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 Let us go to 2 Timothy 1.7 again. In closing, I want us to understand who we are. Second Timothy 1 7. You know, just, just to give this content, context, I mean, uh, Paul is writing to Timothy. Timothy was in distress. One, his master is jailed. His teacher is jailed. His spiritual father is in jail. Two, there is no peace in his church. Three, Timothy is young. Very young. He's faced with the fear of the absent, absent master who is in jail. Second, he's faced with the fear of leading people who are older than him in the church. Third, the fear of his own age. So, Paul 
write him. Write to him. Let us start from four. From three actually. Second Timothy 1, 3 to 7. I thank God whom I serve with a pure conscience. As my forefathers did and with, as without ceasing, I remember you in my prayers day and night. Greatly desiring to see you. Being mindful of your tears. Whose tears? Timothy's tears. That I may be filled with joy. When I call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you, which dwelt first in your grandmother, Louise, and your mother, Eunice, and I'm persuaded it's in you also. Six, therefore I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying of my hands. Seven, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of a sound mind. Paul is telling Timothy how to approach his tears, his fears. He's saying, first, I'm aware of your tears. However, there are things that I am more aware of than your tears. One, I'm aware of a genuine faith that is in you. Two, I'm aware of the gift that is in you. You need to stir up the gift. Paul is saying, there are ways of confronting fear. One is genuine faith. Hallelujah. One is what? Genuine faith. He's saying, and two, be mindful of who you are. God has deposited something in you, child of God. He said to Timothy, there is a gift that is in you. And that gift needs to be stirred up. Child of God, when these storms come, stir up your genuine faith by believing in the word of God and also by looking unto those who have gone before us. That a church before us has gone through storms. Worse than this before. There was a time that the disciples were waking up only to hear that one of them has been killed, is dead. They wake up, Stephen has been stoned. They wake up, Paul has been killed. They wake up, Peter he has been crucified upside down. They were waking up to bad news. But that did not stop the gospel. We are standing here today because there were those who were mindful of their genuine faith. Who said, we can see what is happening around us. But we know that those who have been before us, even when things are going bad, they never jumped off the boat of this gospel. They stayed in the, go in the boat of this gospel. They stirred up their gifts and continued to preach the word of God in and out of season. They stirred up their gifts and continued to use their gifts to edify the word of God. I want to put it to you, child of God. Yes, we are mindful of your tears, just as Paul has said to Timothy. We are mindful of your pain, just as Paul has said to Timothy. But there are things that we are more mindful of in you. It's your genuine faith that is based in the blood of Jesus Christ. Your genuine faith that is based in the finished works of Calvary. Your genuine faith that is based in the knowledge knowing that nothing is impossible with God. Hallelujah. Your genuine faith. And when that genuine faith is activated... Your genuine faith will locate the gift that is on the inside of you. Some of you have been given the gift of prayer. 
When you start praying, you can say amen. Go for that gift. It is what is needed right now. Some of you have been given the gift of worship. When you start worshiping God, the heavens shake. Go for that gift. Stand it up. That's what Paul said. Why? He said, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power. Jesus Christ said to the disciples, do not leave Jerusalem until the Holy Spirit come upon you. You shall receive power. I want you to know that you are a new testament child of God. We don't say you shall receive power anymore. I'm saying you have received power. No, no, no. Say to yourself, I have received power. I have the Holy Spirit on the inside of me. I have received power. And that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, it dwelleth in me, revitalizing my mortal body and the gifts on the inside of me. In the midst of this storm, I shall serve my God. That's who you are. Oh, sorry, oh, she rabacasia. Oh, sorry, bacashien de bocosa. Let the Holy Spirit, that Holy Spirit on the inside of you, He's waiting for you. He has been waiting for you to surrender your fears so that He can come up and envelop you. Because the Bible says, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Not rivers of fear, but rivers of living water. There are people who are waiting to drink from the rivers of living water that is flowing out of your belly. We shall not sink under fear. We shall not be deterred from the work of God. I don't care how many opposing situations and opposing spirits come. We shall stand knowing that he who has begun a good work in his church, he who has begun a good work in his church shall accomplish it until the day of Jesus Christ. You know, the spirit of power fortifies your mind. Where you're supposed to be stressing. The Bible said Paul and Silas went where they were in jail. They had the spirit of power. Their minds were fortified. Where they were supposed to be stressing. Where they were supposed to be crying. The Bible said they begin to sing and praise the Lord. Why? It is the child of God who has received the spirit of power. Whose mind is fortified when storms come. When jails come. Instead of them mourning and groaning. They begin to praise the name of the Lord. The Bible says as they begin to praise the name of the Lord. The whole place they were in was shaken. And the jails the chains fell off their hands and other prisoners. I want to put it to you, child of God. When your mind is fortified by the spirit of power, who is the Holy Spirit, it doesn't matter where they throw you. It doesn't matter where you go. You will always find a reason to praise the Lord, your God. Hallelujah. Yes, child of God. That's who you are. For God has not given you the spirit of fear. The Bible says end of love. You know, this love that we're talking about, it is the love of the cross. The blood of the cross is the cross of love. You know, this is the love that surpasses all understanding. He said, is there, you, is, you are not given the spirit of fear, but of power. You have the power. Now there is this love. It is the love of knowing that no one can do what the love of my life, 
No one can do what the love of my life, Jesus Christ, did on the cross. And understand that no one can undo what the love of my life, Jesus Christ, did on the cross. Calvary is there, is standing, it is finished. He has been crucified. His blood has been shed. The blood remains Victoria today. When you believe in the love of God that he has for you, you are also activating the power in the blood of Jesus Christ. You are also activating the power of the cross. You are saying, I know he loves me. When the kingdom of darkness ask you, how did he know? He said, no one shed his blood on the cross for me except Jesus Christ. He's the only one who has the blood that was shed before the foundation of the world. That blood knew about today. That blood understood what's happening today. It is that love of the blood of Jesus that I'm standing upon. I'm saying I'm not shaken. I am not moved because the cross has done it all for me. Hallelujah. And of love. He has not given the spirit of fear. Of power. And of love. Allow the love of God. Allow the blood of Jesus Christ. To saturate your senses. You need to begin to say. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ. Upon my mind. Upon my soul. Where there was worry. I release the blood of Jesus Christ. Where there was fear. I release the blood of Jesus Christ. Because it is the blood of love. There is no greater love than this. That a man can give his only begotten son. To be crucified for the sins of the world. That is the love that we stand upon. No greater love. 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 You must know. Don't doubt the love of God is for you. When you feel that you don't understand it, just go to the cross. You will see him hanging. You will see him out. You will see him in the, in the tomb. You will see him resurrecting again on the third day. And you'll see him ascending, seated at the right hand side of the Father, making intercession for you even to this day. When you say, I am weak, he says, no, no, Father, that one is strong. They say, why do you say he's strong? Because I am his strength. I'm the one who died for him. I'm the one who carried his sins. I know my strength is his strength. That is the reason why the Bible says, your strength, your weakness your weakness is his strength. You are made perfect in your weakness. Why? Because your weakness is Jesus' strength for you. Just surrender. Just surrender. You say, end of a sound mind. Wow. I love the sound mind. I love the sound mind. This sound mind will make you know. Can you go to Malachi? Paul verse 2, I want you to say something. I'm saying in closing again for the last time. If I say it again, just say amen, pastor. We are used to it. Malachi 4 verse 2. He said, but to you who fear my name, the son of righteousness shall arise with healing on his wings. You shall go out and grow fat like a stall fed calves. You know, there is one thing that we are allowed to fear. <laughs> Fear the name of Jesus Christ such that there is no more fear left to be afraid of anything else. Oh. Am I talking to someone? Fear the name of Jesus. When you put all your fears in the name of Jesus Christ, he comes out and rebuke the storms. That is what the disciples did when they realized that they tried taking the water out of the boat. Of the, the boat. They tried doing using their experience on the boat. They realized that no, 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 no. This, this storm is, is, is not listening to us. They said, now we know someone. We know someone is in the, in the boat. His name is Jesus. And they say he's the one that will fear. They want to say, Master. But the, the, the way, the, the, do you know why they called him Master? Because they, 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 they're, they're reverencing. 
is, 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 is a sign of fear. We are afraid of your name. You are the only one that we know. You are the master. Your name carries power. Master, don't you care that we are perishing? When the master heard that, wow, they called me master. They, they acknowledge my name. They know who I am. I will rise up with healings in their wings. Do you want healing? Go for the name of Jesus. The name above all name. Let your sound mind. Let your sound mind. Let your sound mind remind you of who Jesus is. Let the sound mind remind you of which name to be afraid of. We are not going to be afraid of the name COVID. For there is a name above all names. I want to put it to you. The madman in Gadara. When Jesus Christ healed him. In, in Luke 8.35. The Bible says. They went and, they, and looked at him. And they found him seated at Jesus' feet. With a sound mind. I want to put it to you. That a sound mind will put you in Jesus' feet. A sound mind won't make you run around. A sound mind will put you where the master is. Because that's where healing is. Matthew 15.30 says that they brought the sick, the lame and the blind. And they put them all in Jesus' feet. And he healed them all. Even the madmen of Gadara. When he had a sound mind, he knew only of one place to go. He said at Jesus' feet, Oh, can you go to, to the scripture? Who oh, just begin to say, Father, I pray for the sound mind this season. I pray for the sound mind this season. Come on, begin to ask him. Say, Father, I pray for the sound mind this season. Luke 8:35. They went, they went out to see what had happened. And and came to Jesus and found the man from whom the demons has departed, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. I want to tell you, when you are on your sound mind, there's only one position that a sound mind will take you to. The sound mind will take you to Jesus' feet. It won't take you to anybody's feet. It will take you to the feet of the master because that's where your breakthrough is. That's where your healing is. That's where your upliftment is. Hallelujah. Oh Lord, we thank you for the sound mind. We thank you for the sound mind for you have given us the spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. This sound mind make us to search ourselves and to know where do we stand with Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's go to Luke 15, 17. Luke 15, 17. For God has not given us the spirit of fear. He said, when he has come to him to himself, he, when he's come to himself, other, other translation says, when he's come to his mind, he said, How many, how, how many of my father's higher servants have bread enough to share and perish? This is the story of a prodigal son. You see, when the sound mind hit him, he remembered his father. He said, how many of my father's servants are eating bread today? I want you to know, maybe you, maybe you have left your father's house because of fear. But I pray, let, let the sound mind restore you back to your father's house, to Jesus' feet. Because when, you, when your sound mind comes, you know where there is life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sound minds lead to repentance and restoration. That's why Paul says, you have a sound mind. You have heard me preach. You know the doctrine of Jesus Christ. 
You know that Christ was born. He lived for us and with us. He was crucified on the cross for our sins. He carried all our sins and infirmities. He died on the cross. He was buried in the tomb for us and with us. And on the third day, he rose again. When your sound mind begins to tell you that doctrine, you become sober. Your temperance calm down. You become honest with yourself. Religion flies out of the window. And you are restored back to Jesus' feet. Through repentance. That's the reason why Paul said, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of a sound mind. That's who you are, child of God. I want you to stand up wherever you are. I want you to begin to pray in the spirit if you can. If you can't, I would like you to just begin to, to worship him. Just begin to worship him. Just begin to worship him. Just begin to worship him. I want to tell you that you, you, you're going to receive newfound freedom in the midst of chaos. Something will be happening. Come on, let's begin to pray. Rebo Sianda. Rebo Ko Standing in the case Sita Raboshia. Rebo Ko Sanda Mesara. Yes, Lord. Rebo Sianda in Bokosiata. Shari Bako Sandi Mekin Zari Bo Sori Bakasi Etem Shinda Bo Sari Bakasian Beshandi Bako Zori Bekes Pirako Sandi Be Sitake Shoro Boko Sianda Bekes Father we bind the spirit of fear and its works in the mighty name of Jesus Christ we close every door that has been opened by the spirit of fear in the mighty name of Jesus Christ we close every door. Heavenly Father, we open the doors of sound mind. We open the doors of sound mind in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of a sound mind. Father, you spoke of our genuine faith, of the gifts that are within us. Oh Lord, arise. Arise, mighty God. I hear this word. Arise and shine. For your glory has come. Oh, Lord. Oh, yeah. Yes, 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 Lord. Yes, Lord. I'll do it, Lord. I will do it, Lord. I will do it, Lord. I'll do it now, Lord. Yes, Lord. I will do it now, oh, Lord. I will do it now, oh, Lord. I will do it now, oh, Lord. Arise, shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. And deep darkness the people. But the Lord will arise over you and his glory shall be seen upon you. Oh yes Lord. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. Father I thank you. I give you the glory. The honor. The praise and adoration. Thank you for your word. 